my daughter's school in Louisiana is not the only one employing slavery, slavery reenactments as part of the curriculum. Our next guest had an even more distressing experience with their daughter's school in Hartford, Connecticut. According to Sandra and James Baker, their daughter endured being packed together with other students in a dark room to simulate being on a slave ship and hiding in the woods from their white masters. The 12 year old says she heard statements like N word. If you can read, there's a problem. And dumb, dark skinned Negro person. How dare you look at me? And you're not a person, you're property. It was all part of a field trip with the Hartford Magnet Trinity College Academy last November. And the Bakers say they weren't informed that the Underground Railroad reenactment was part of the curriculum for the four day trip. They have since filed a complaint with the Connecticut Commission on Human Rights and Opportunities and just this week addressed the school board with their concerns. Their daughter now attends another school and we've reached out to the Hartford Magnet Trinity College Academy and the Hartford School District and both have offered no comment because of the open investigation. Joining me now are Sandra and James Baker and Khalil Mohammed of the Schomburg Center for Research in Black Culture. Thank you for reaching out to me. Thank you for being here today. Tell me a little bit about this field trip in November of 2013. Sure. Uh, so we, the, the field trip is uh, with an organization called Nature's Classroom. And when I heard the name of it and read a little bit about it, I thought they'd just be going learning, you know, which side of the tree moss grows on and sure. things like that, you know. Um, so we, we sent her as a four-day field trip, and they stayed overnight uh, during the whole time. When she came back, she got in the car and immediately told my wife what had happened, started telling her what had happened. Mm -hmm. My wife called me and said, this is not good. She tried to keep herself calm. Yep. But our daughter told us the whole story in her own words, the things that, that she experienced, and then we proceeded to... Uh, try to talk to the school administration about it. So let me read, as a, as a matter of what we need to do on air, let me read a portion of the statement from Dr. John Santos, who's the executive director of the Nature's Classroom. It's a very long statement. We'll put the whole statement up on our website at mhpshow.com, but this is a, a small portion of it. Nature's Classroom does not condone the use of the N-word. We would have taken immediate disciplinary action, including dismissal, had we known of this concern. We began an investigation into the specific complaints, and this investigation is ongoing. And my main thought in reading that was, um, well, that's not really the biggest problem here, right? The, the use of the N-word or not is just a small portion of what the problem is here. What do you, how would you identify what you see as the biggest problem with this reenactment? Well, Number one, it minimizes um, the African-American experience in this country. I, I found it insulting. Mm -hmm. um, one of the comments that was made to my daughter after it was over by the facilitators was, um, now you know, what it likes it, you, you know what it feels like to be bullied. So to Oh, because slavery was bullying. Yeah, exactly. So it, it minimized the experience. You know, Khalil, you, you run a, perhaps the, the most important um, national repository around black culture we want our children to learn not just our children we want white children we want all american children to learn about slavery we want them to learn about resistance we want them to learn about the underground railroad these are critical things to learn in the curriculum but whether it is using a google chrome map to map your way to freedom as though that's what enslaved people did they went on their google um, or whether it is this notion that the experience of the middle passage was a bullying experience i just keep thinking I, I know your heart is in the right place, but this is the wrong way. It is the wrong way. Well, but, but the problem really first begins with the fact that this country has never taken full account of the centrality of the experience of enslaved Africans. So first of all, our very notion of liberty is attached to slavery, not just because King George oppressed the colonists, mm -hmm. but because the day-to-day -day reality of people treated as property stood as a constant reminder of how precious freedom really mm -hmm. was. Mm -hmm. And so it's built into our DNA, this contrasting metaphor between liberty and slavery. But also the economic footprint of slavery made America the wealthiest nation in the world and shortened the time for that development. Mm -hmm. So we've got to start dealing with the importance of slavery at the very beginning. It's got to be infused in what we learn in American history. So therefore, it can't be some random Wednesday on some random field right. trip where all of a sudden you drop down and you're in the middle of the Underground Railroad reenactment. Yeah. You've got to begin with children's literature. Yeah. So you could use, for example, Scholastics, Henry Box Brown, which tells the story of Henry Brown who mails himself to freedom. Just as the opening moment for both the agency of these human beings yep. who were captured from 
countries in Africa who brought culture and language mm-hmm. with them, whose humanity was bigger than actually the experience of being enslaved. Yep. He was trying to reconnect with his family. Right. That's just the beginning. Then you layer in the difficulties, the pain, right. yes. the trauma, but you just don't do it on some Wednesday afternoon on a field trip. And, and, and this, you know, we were talking a bit in the break. For me, this is one of the challenges, and, and, and I don't mean to like have a pity party for middle class black families, but it is one of the challenges when we are faced with school systems that are deeply segregated and often where quality of, of educational outcomes is also related to race of school in, in ways that are troubling. So often we, we try to opt into the best possible school we can for our kids, but then the reading, writing, and arithmetic can sometimes be counter to their very spirits. To, like, I know my daughter, very close in age to yours, she's 11 and a half, is still on a daily basis, like, dealing with how that made her feel about her school, that that happened in that space. Yes. Right. I mean, because, I mean, she trusted her teachers, we trusted her teachers, and she's the type of kid who's going to do what um, she respects her teachers, so she's going to do what they asked her, asked her to do. Yes. And, um, you know, they spent three days having fun before they even brought the kids um, to the to the field to do the experiment, so the kids had no indication that this was going to happen. Mm-hmm. They was they surprised them, and and I just want to point out that the, these are children. The yes. average child is ten that goes mm-hmm. on this field trip, so between the ages of ten and twelve, and no one's talked about the um, developmental appropriateness of yep. um, kids being in, in an enactment or. Um, the psychological impact that it made. The, the, the statement from Nature's Classroom went on uh, to read that students are always able to remove themselves from the activity or choose not to participate in the activity. But your point about trusting your teachers, believing that school is a safe place, you can't actually just opt out. And, and I, I want to go back also to your point about trivializing, Khalil, because it feels to me like some things won't be known. Mm-hmm. I, in fact, cannot know in a bodily way what the experience of the terror of the middle passages. Mm -hmm. I can develop empathy by reading. I can know a deep history. But not only can I not know it, but I would prefer that my child never actually experience whatever that terror is. So just as, as I want us to have empathy for sexual assault survivors. I don't want to reenact rape on right. on adolescents. And just as I want them to understand the horror of terrorism, I don't want to put them in a burning building. I mean, what, why would we think it's okay to play in this way with slavery? Well, think about this. So we have almost no cultural institution in this country that tells the slavery story in an effective way that would create those moments of empathy and understanding in a responsible way with a parent and a child, with a teacher and a student. So if you think about the effectiveness of the Holocaust Museum as a way that both uses abstraction, right, the part of the exhibit where you see the shoes of these thousands, millions of people who have been exterminated and all this left behind are these shoes again get recycled and sold off for manufacturing parts to, to make German companies wealthy. Like that is incredibly powerful and yet no one is essentially put into a gas chamber right. to experience right. what it might be to be cooked alive. Right. So the fact Nor that, would we want it no, nor right. is that a necessary part of developing a sense of empathy in this moment. Right. That's right. So again back to the larger superstructure here the fact the fact that we are now in 2015 just about to build mm-hmm. the first National Museum of African American History, which is still trou- troubled by how do you tell the slavery story, still doesn't know. only illustrates how deeply problematic it is, this reconciling of these issues. At the Junior Scholars Program, which we do at the Schomburg Center, we take middle school students as early as 10 years old all the way through high school. We just taught the Emancipation Proclamation period. How did we do it? We used the autobiography of Frederick Douglass, Mm -hmm. and we used the story of Harriet Jacobs, who was repeatedly raped by her master. Now, we took weeks to walk through this common readings with these kids. We broke them up into age-appropriate groups so that the 10-year-olds learned at a pace appropriate to them, and the 17-year-olds learned at a pace appropriate to them. That's the kind of time and space and reflection and carefulness that is necessary. How's your daughter? She's doing fine. She's doing fine. Um, Of course, she's affected by what happened, but, um, you know, as most kids her age, they don't want to talk. They don't want to talk about it. You know, it's hard to talk about or even hard to to articulate Mm -hmm. her experience. And I think 
just over the past 10 months, she talks about it periodically mm -hmm. and more and more since um, the news reports has started coming out about Nature's Classroom yep. and seeing the footage on TV and um, just remembering um, the experience. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, have you been encountering with lots of good, positive sort of narratives about black achievement and accomplishment and that sort of thing? We, we try to do that a lot, yeah. you know, t talking about all the, the firsts that black folks mm -hmm. that have, have achieved and, and trying to point out things. Uh, my daughter uh, is involved in dance, so trying to point mm -hmm. out, you know, achievements by black dancers yes. and, and such. So we, we, we try to pump in as much positive as possible. We're obsessed with and love Misty Copeland here on this show. So um, <laughs> there are, in fact, many uh, contemporary and historical role models. Thank you so much to the Bakers for being here. Thank you, Khalil. Thank and you. We, maybe it's time to think um, very carefully through how to take the kind of work you're doing at the Schomburg and, and, and make it available to more. And, you know, just folks, if you want to do a reenactment of slavery in your school how about uh, Nat Turner's rebellion up next the stars of the hit Broadway play the trip to Bountiful